And in the article about those new moons, they admitted they were looking for Planet Nine. They didn't say 9X. They didn't say X, Nemesis, Planet X. They said Planet Nine. They were looking for Planet Nine, and they discovered all these new moons around Jupiter. Gee, just around the time that we were claiming it was passing underneath Jupiter. There's way too much to cover today. And, and I'm going to go through the solar system, and then we're going to talk about things that are really, really important. You're looking at a Mauna Loa ground-based telescope showing you a very sizable and significant M-flare. It's funny how the, the X-flare barely shows up, but the M-flare just is impressive. As the pocket expands to this flare, this coronal mass ejection, you notice the edges of the bubble impact the brighter portion at 2 o'clock position and cause an alteration in the structure and shape and formation of those other streamers that are coming out into the corona of the sun. When you have an active region ejecting electrons, uh, shooting them out like a cannon through uh, all this plasma, it lights up the plasma. And when a CME expands so rapidly and quickly that it reshapes that streamer, then you know these bright spots that we've been showing you in the corona are real and they're just not some anomaly of light. But what a cool, cool ground-based image or set of images. Here's another steel frame image of an anomaly uh, that we think was redacted off of that ground-based satellite. But notice how bright the corona is becoming in this in this sun, and that may be the, the, the death of all of us, what's going on in that corona. We had an X-flare, it uh, should be Earth-directed. Uh, they're not predicting any major solar storms, so therefore we will predict uh, KP index 6 in the next day or two. You can still get cosmic rays at night, but at least it's not in addition to the photon radiation. You're dealing with strictly you know, particles by then. Yeah, and they emit photon radiation as well. So we, the X-flare, we couldn't really see it uh, for sure. We were, we were trying to find it on this instrument. It went off on the 10th, about 1355 uh, military time, UTC. Uh, and yet, or, you know, we do see activity at that time, but it's just so severely cut off. So then we go to Stereo A to see what we can see on Stereo A. We strung together hundreds of images and uh, uh, rushing through them. Again, s since the beginning, Stereo A pulsates in its background light. But that was a very, very large flare. But that one uh, happened on the 11th. So, and then the M flare. I mean, th these are big massive balls of plasma. Here we get to 1355 right now, and or 1588, and nothing on the 10th. So, but then on the 11th, kaboom. So, um, you know, why are they omitting X flares? And I don't know. Maybe so they can blame an EMP on an X flare? I don't know. But some of these plasma eruptions are significant and again you know so when you see a flare go off and disrupt the streamer above it you know a particle pressure is happening you know that that's just not some anomaly that really is a stream of particles and amazing how it pushes and doesn't pull there's the same polarity on the edges of these these regions. Now, the the whole thing is, is that you got to protect your families. The ground temperatures are going to be 10 to 15 degrees. Surface temperatures are going to be 10 to 15 degrees above what they normally run, and they run high because 
we all know that ground temperatures and surface temperatures of everything have gone through the ceiling in an accelerated curve, not in a gradual curve, in an accelerated curve. I don't know if accelerated means anything to anybody anymore, but an acceleration means, uh, you know, when, when something's going to re reverse or turn around, it's probably not in the middle of an accelerated curve. But, you know, keep your fingers crossed. So we had a M, that M flare was very spectacular uh, and it happened a day or two after the X flare that Earth directed should be hitting us today, tonight, tomorrow, depending on the speed. The speed is, it should be on the Solar Seeds website, but things are so redacted. I, you know, I really don't want to waste my time looking for something that's not even there. Now, with respect to all the satellites that are around Earth, this is just a grouping and a, a recreation of the number of satellites that are circling Earth. Shall we add to this another thousand just to bring us internet? Gee, with all these satellites, why don't we have internet already? So, you know, the technocracy that they're going to be employing is, uh, you know, a benefit to mankind, but can used, be used against mankind. And that leads to something far more important than uh, the X flare, even though, you know, I don't want you taking it lightly. Um, do not, you know, do not leave your car parked in direct sunlight uh, and shield your sensitive plants and animals and children. Do not go out and play soccer at noon. That's ridiculous. If you're in a soccer league, you need to present them with, you know, just email me and I'll send you the data so you can print it out and hand it to them, okay? But here's the problem. People are so distracted by these events that are happening that we forget about what just happened last week. We, we forget about what happened last year, what happened 10 years ago and 20, 30 years ago. And you all know it is honest to God's truth that if you forget history, you are doomed to repeat it. History is a way to learn about man and man's behaviors. And it's important that we not get bogged down in these arguments that have divided us. Because that's probably, just consider that the division has been orchestrated through that little square TV set and square monitor that comes out and is so much part of our life. Um, I, for example... Uh, feel that the racial division is being accelerated through this critical race stuff when when minorities have made some of the biggest strides in the last 20 years. I mean, we've had a president who is a minority. We have vice presidents that are minority. We have attorney generals. We have, we have all kinds of people. Uh, you know, chief of staff. We have military generals. We have Supreme Court justices and lower court justices that are minority <coughs> and women. So why, when we're making the biggest advances in that forum, do they now start promoting that white people should be ashamed of what's happened to the black people? I cannot own, you cannot own, any mental health professional will tell you on planet Earth, or he would lose his license, you cannot own the abuse put on by a second person that you do not and did not control. The person who suffers the accountability and sole responsibility is the abuser. So if black people were abused, which they were, if anybody is abused, you can't single out an entire race of people to hold accountable for those few people who were abusive and racist and prejudiced and narcissistic. Because to do so is in itself racist. It's called reverse racism. So 
I mean, and all of this is, you just read and it's there, I mean, but the bottom line is the division and the arguments are so divisive and there's so many things going on and I need your help. So let's get started. You know, as I go through this radio show, the, I'm flashing things up on the screen. Uh, you can get those off the website. You just hit the podcast and hit pause at any time to read anything. If you need a link, a source link, just ask. But the bottom line is you got to ask for a specific source link. Just, just don't ask me to source link everything in this video. Anything you have a question on, be specific. I'll give you a link or two or three or four. And in the case of Planet X, 60, six, zero. Now, we featured some of those articles about Planet X, uh, now known as Planet Nine. So remember all those years we were beat up and badgered and harassed and, and we, you know, uh, stereotyped uh, about Planet X, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, NASA admits to Planet Nine. Oh, whoops. And then what happened to all those badgering, trolling people? What happened to them? They just kind of got kind of quiet and went, went on to other topics. The, so to argue whether Planet X exists or not is ridiculous. Anything that's going on in the solar system is provable. It's provable through science and data, which is rapidly disappearing. So if you don't hurry up and get busy on your research, you're not going to figure anything out. Think of, imagine a society that you go to a website that tells you what you should be thinking and how you, did, how you should think. And instead of doing your own research. And, to, and going to those websites, people think of as research. That's research. I went to a fact check site and researched it. You researched nothing. You, uh, did you research the person on the other side of the screen? No, you didn't. Did you research uh, things that have been proven lies? That if they're still uh, promoting those lies, well, ask about Lee Harvey Oswald and Jack Ruby and see if they're all unanimous in the official narratives. Your, your fact checkers. Now, so, you know, the, is the moon off? Is the moon off? Isn't it off? You know, it really doesn't matter. The, you know, if somebody tells you the moon's not off and they present you with no evidence, well, then why would they make that statement? Especially if they're promoting themselves as some type of a scientific-based information. You know, put up all the links, but yet, Spin everything, you know, spin it. The moon is not off. And, and see, and I'm one of those people that say, uh, don't step over the obvious to pick up something more obscure. The obvious is the obvious. Okay? Somebody says the moon isn't off. Well, I mean, just forget the articles I, I posted about how they did laser measurements and found the suit found that the moon was more elliptical and actually wrote articles to try to explain away the ellipticality of the moon because it's they call it a secular change in the moon well i mean to me it's a solar system change but you know let, let's just confuse everybody about what's really going on because the end game the end game is here and 90 percent of people out there have no clue what's going on around them none they're caught up in their immediate gratification little world. Making ends meet, barely. And so anything that's disruptive or challenges their comfort zone may be automatically rejected just out of plain old-fashioned denial. But if the moon was really off and you wanted to prove that somebody was an, a, a liar or you wanted to prove that somebody was a psyop, that somebody was out there to spread uh, uh, bits and pieces of disinformation while feeding us bits and pieces of, you know, conspiracy truths, then, then you would just simply address 
the things that they debunk. Because, see, Einstein and other people have said, and I quote, it's virtually impossible to disprove the existence of anything. You want to say mermaids exist? Well, somebody says, oh, no, they don't exist. Somebody from government says, no, they don't exist. Somebody from the, you know, oceanic uh, society says, no, they don't exist. Or then you say, well, what's your proof? And they have none. Well, we, we haven't seen any. We haven't filmed any. So, therefore, they don't exist. Well, imagine if our world revolved around, well, if you can't see it, it's not there. Imagine that. Does that sound scientific to you? No, it actually sounds sick and crazy. But somehow we get all uh, turned around and all this and smoke and mirrors and we're banging in in the mirrors and we're trying to find our way through this maze of disinformation. And we're trying to battle our own fears to, to get to what the truth is because your children and my children and your grandchildren are depending on you. To find out what's really going on. Well, the moon isn't off. Well, I mean, I th when there's scientific articles trying to explain the secular changes in the moon, then the moon's off. Period. Using lasers, okay? I, I you know, no tape measure there. So, but all you got to do is grab the obvious. Talk to anybody who took an astronomy class. In the 70s, 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Did I say 70s again? Um, so none of them heard about supermoons. The word supermoon didn't exist. You know what else didn't exist? The word king tide. High tide, storm tides, seismic tides. You know, reverse tide. I mean, there's all kinds of tides. Undertoes. Rip tides. So, <coughs> but no high tides. No high tide king tides. That's a new term. It's a new phenomenon. And, you know, you, the reason you know that is when you try to research it, there's nothing clear about it. The, you can't find a table of all the uh, king tides in all the countries. You may find a table for your state. Then you and you read where you know February used to be a big king tide month, and but you look at the king tide calendars now. Guess what? the The king tides and supermoons are six months apart. Well, what happens in six months? Oh. Earth falls into an exact same alignment it did six months earlier. It's so if there was a, an alignment that caused problems either with solar activity or earthquakes or volcanism, then in six months you would see the same patterns play out. We've showed this over and over again. We'll show it again uh, how six months and, and on the quarter uh, these clusters of earthquakes, very similar in clusters and numbers and magnitudes uh, happen on a clock. On a clock. How does that happen? You're not supposed to be able to predict earthquakes according to USGS. So, you know, so obviously that screams in alignment. So why are we having supermoons six months apart? Tell me, why? And why are they progressing over a one and two month period why are they, don't they just show up? Well, here's the reason. The moon is becoming less elliptical. But those alignments still exist. And so when it does pass close to Earth, it maintains a similar orientation on subsequent orbits. But the increased ellipticality was addressed in highly technical, uh, very, very uh, well-written documentation and and reports out of the scientific astronomy and physics community 
and reasons for the secular changes in the moon. Even now, here we go again. NASA says nothing's different. Talks about the moon wobble. The moon wobble causing high tides. Well, you know, giving it the name of a wobble is a little, you know, iffy. And then they start talking about draconic years and, and the amplitude of, of the, you know, the 18.6, 18.3 years. They have ascending node, a descending node, and then back to the ascending node. That's 18 years plus for the, for the moon to complete that cycle. Calling that a wobble and blaming it for the high tides is ridiculous. But now, you know, when they come out with an explanation, yeehaw, because they're admitting they're admitting the existence of something they were denying existed in the first place. They're admitting to having deceived you. But because everything was a mystery, they really didn't deceive you. It's just they, they were ignorant. They were naive. The Higher Truth Channel knew about it. The subscribers who watched the Higher Truth Channel knew about it. But NASA didn't know about it. And now they do. Same thing happened with Earth's wobble. So, so we have supermoons when we didn't. So shut up. I, I got one piece of evidence that says you're wrong, and you got zero piece of evidence to say I'm wrong. In a court of law, you know who wins? I win. But then I pile on. I pile on the evidence. Every single thing that you should find uh, in, in the planets, in their atmospheres, in um, the behavior of Earth, in the behavior of the sun, everything that you should be able to predict would happen if a brown dwarf came too close. All of it has been documented, and we have pulled up those documents. We put them right there on screen captures. All you had to do was hit pause and read it. So now, when some, and, and then, you know, don't step over the obvious. When somebody says something doesn't exist and they represent their opinion as factual, there's a reason for it. It's not just an accident that keeps happening over and over and over and over again. There is no Nibiru. The moon is not out of place. Well, you know what? How many new ephemerises, how many new epochs has NASA come up with? Well, if you don't know that answer, what are you saying that the moon isn't off? Why would you even go there being that ignorant? Unless you had an agenda. Why would you claim that nothing exists when it's impossible to prove it? You know, like, let me use myself as an example. There's, there's certain things we disagree. Particle physics, I disagree. Not vehemently, and I do say, I think, I presume, I don't know how. This is how they arrived at this conclusion. The, the boson particle, I have a hard time of believing. It. The God particle, I have a hard, you know, the anti, I mean, the anti-muon. You know, the muon is supposed to be a primary particle. Primary particles do not degrade. Well, now they have muons that degrade. So, you know, in particle physics, when there's that much gray area, when they arrive up with new particles to explain the missing energy in collisions, oh, well, that means there's more mass when we, we missed mass. Well, the mass is this particle and that particle, this particle and that particle. Um, to me, there's a lot of gray area there. So, do I believe in the God particle? Yeah, it may exist. But, you know, in terms of muons, decaying, in terms of things like that, uh, the high energy neutrinos, I disagree with the NASA's official position. And I could be wrong on the God particle. Because I have no proof that it does not exist. So, therefore, I cannot sell, tell you it doesn't exist. And, therefore, haven't and I won't. The uh, calendars. Notice how the old ones disagree with the new ones. How can you have an astrology calendar based upon the precise motion 
of the solar system and have it all of a sudden be so far off. So, I mean, the obvious is obvious. You know, when you have an object that comes up over the horizon that defines the ecliptic and the moon is south of that, when it's supposed to be north, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. You, you know, if you can't see the obvious and you're going to go out there and say Nibiru doesn't exist, uh, you know, because you can't see it, because NASA says it doesn't exist, yet, but guess what? Shh, it's, a, it's kind of like a secret that's been let out. Planet Nine does exist. So, so, you know, and there's so many things happening because of this. We're going through a very difficult, stressful time on planet Earth. And, and yet, NASA admits Planet Nine. The obvious, the obvious. And, and you know, I could go on and on about how when we told you it was passing underneath Jupiter, all of a sudden they found new moons around Jupiter, not with a, a, a Hubble, not with New Horizons, not with Juno, but with a telescope that is on Earth in Hawaii. And in the article about those new moons, they admitted they were looking for Planet Nine. They didn't say 9X. They didn't say X, Nemesis, Planet X. They said Planet Nine. They were looking for Planet Nine, and they discovered all these new moons around Jupiter. Gee, just around the time that we were claiming it was passing underneath Jupiter. And funny how they were looking in the opposite part of the sky where NASA said Planet Nine is supposed to spend almost all of its time. Don't look out to where it's always. Look to where it's almost never. And guess what? That's what they were doing in Hawaii. They were looking for Planet Nine near Jupiter. At the same time, we were saying that's where Planet X was. Well, then some brilliant person in, you know, in Mauna Loa, and God bless their dead astronomers, by the way, but listen, if this thing passed according to Harrington's model, it would have passed underneath Saturn first and Jupiter second. And if Jupiter stole moons, then Saturn could have stolen moons. So the same telescope, uh, not, not because of just basic logic and physics, because of some real scientific algorithm told them to look for new moons around Saturn and the algorithm told them where to look for it. Um, and guess what? The same pattern plays out. The same inclinations and the same retrograde orbits, which are against the grain of all the other moons. A retrograde orbit. In the same calendar year, we said Planet X had passed underneath both planets. And there's science encyclopedias uh, that talk about Voyager probe, that talk about Pioneer probe. So the, uh, the chief of JPL back then, or one of the head guys in JPL and NASA, was named Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson uh, quoted frequently on the, Vo the Voyager products and the Vo Voyager project. These Voyager um, images, these Voyager, uh, very fantastic images coming from Voyager uh, and Pioneer show that in direct quote of Dr. Anderson, he states, this is Dr. Anderson, this is a quote, that Voyager and Pioneer were equipped with equipment to detect either the magnetic field or the gravitational field of, come on, all together now, let's all say it in unison, Planet X. It's amazing uh, that people are still arguing about the existence of Planet X and Nibiru. The, the, the real 
the real funny thing is that one of the debunkers is, is a very popular channel that has been allowed to stay on YouTube for some strange reason. The, 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 real, the real funny thing is that one of the debunkers is, is a very popular channel that has been allowed to stay on YouTube for some strange reason. The, 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 real, the real funny thing is that one of the debunkers is, is a very popular channel that has been allowed to stay on YouTube for some strange reason. And the, the notion that there is no Nibiru, there is no Planet X, is not a discussion for anybody who ever has subscribed to my channel. Because they've seen the evidence. It's overwhelming. NASA talked about it. Who coined the phrase Planet X? Who coined the phrase Nemesis? Those are astronomers and NASA itself. Who coined the phrase Planet Nine? In early, from the 80s, a, an encyclopedia, a science encyclopedia, talks about space probes, talks about a dead star being at 50 billion miles away from our solar system. And... And it's in an encyclopedia. There are published papers. We've shown you references to 60 different articles regarding the presence of Nemesis. All of it based upon what you would predict uh, uh, a large body to do to our solar system. Disrupt the continuity of both the Kuiper Belt and the Asteroid Belt. There's articles about that. Nemesis. Uh, about the perturbations in Neptune, the perturbations in Uranus, the the dwarf planets, um, and the, the evidence has been so overwhelming. How in the world could I, myself, and anybody around me associated with this channel make hundreds, literally hundreds of earthquake predictions and solar flare predictions and be right on every single one based upon the position of Planet X, based upon the location of Planet X. And we could do this over and over and over again, but the bottom line is what is happening to you and me and what our futures look like uh, is kind of the most important thing right now. And whether Planet X is real or not is an argument for those who desire to be distracted. Uh, we don't think you need new physics to explain them. We think the explanation has been there all along. And we never see anybody do any modeling or experiments using high-energy alpha particles. You know, ones that have been accelerated to 450 kilometers a second, heated up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin, and then smashed into a proton, or smashed into oxygen, or smashed into carbon, or smashed into another helium. Nobody has modeled that. Well, until they do, it's going to be a mystery where these high-energy uh, neutrinos are coming from. Well, we know what they're coming from. They're coming from particle fission, particle annihilation, particle collision. But we state that as an opinion. We then provide evidence and evidence and more evidence to help prove our opinion we don't just keep coming out and saying oh, oh no there's no such thing as subatomic particles we've never said that because you you einstein has said it's impossible with some of the greatest physicists since einstein has mirrored that statement it's impossible to prove non-existence of anything. You can provide evidence, but it's hard to prove. How do you prove Bigfoot really doesn't exist? By saying, what? How come a body hasn't been found? Well, bodies have been found. Maybe bodies have been found. And it's been kept secret. There you go. That's why you don't find Bigfoot. They, they're very intelligent creatures, supposedly. 
So you know, if one of their family members dies in a social environment, they may bury the body. They may even practice cannibalism in a ritualistic sense. Who knows? But the one thing is, is if a government, uh, Forest Service, U.S. Department of Agriculture comes across a Bigfoot body, you will not be able to see it. Remember, uh, UFOs didn't exist, but now they do. So disproving the existence of mermaids is impossible. What do you say? Well, we haven't found a body, therefore that's proof. Imagine if the world worked upon that philosophy. If you can't see it, then it doesn't exist. Uh, can you imagine how ludicrous and how ridiculous and how insane and that kind of rhetoric must sound to other scientists? You can say, I don't believe in mermaids. But, you know, there's actually more evidence supporting the existence of mermaids than there is evidence supporting the non-existence. Why? Because it's impossible to debunk the existence of anything. Well, we don't detect this. We don't detect that. Well, who's we? Who are you relying on to tell you we haven't detected anything? So, it's impossible. So, anybody who says the Biru doesn't exist, that, 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 that there's no changes in the moon, is, in fact, proven himself to be a liar just on its face. Just by making the statement that something doesn't exist as it's a factual statement, but it's not, it's an opinion. But presenting it as factual is absolutely without any qualms whatsoever misleading you, pushing you away from a belief, twisting your arm. And for what reason? There has to be an agenda. There is no other logical conclusion you can arrive at. Why would somebody do that? And to come out and debunk the existence of anything in a scientific community is ridiculous. If you're stating in such clear and decisive terms a line that's drawn in the sand, we will not tolerate questions on Nibiru or the changes in the moon. You can't tolerate questions. You're beat down for asking the question. And yet, the person that's doing the debunking is doing so without proof. But yet presenting his opinion as a fact and defending it to his own downfall. Not only is that a huge 180 degree departure from logic, debunking the existence of anything, give us some evidence. We answer all your questions. Now answer ours. That's not allowed. What's going on? An obvious, biased, an obvious agenda. But yet, if all this is true, and that person is telling you not to worry, then that person becomes a threat to your health, safety, and future. Because he's trying to hide what's going on with your planet. And, and, and so you can, you know, take that down a rabbit hole. The other thing the person is doing when he tries to debunk the existence of Nibiru, especially, is he's contradicting very great scientists, the chief of naval astronomy. The, the guy that's disagreeing with chief of naval astronomy, is he an astronomer? Usually not, and usually not that high rank. He's disagreeing with Dr. John Anderson, who said that the pioneer probes and that the 
the Voyager probes were equipped to detect the gravitational field of Planet X. That was his own words, Planet X. It's public record. Percival Lowell discovered Pluto while searching for Planet X. It's public record. The people in Hawaii Telescope that found all the new moons of Jupiter were looking in that direction for Planet Nine, the ninth planet. So that person who's not an astronomer, who's not a physicist, who can't do calculus and can't do trigonometry and can't do geometry, but that person that's so firm in selling you on a debunk, that person is standing in contradiction of many great scientists and dozens and dozens of scientific physics experiments and measurements done on every aspect of our solar system to demonstrate and to finitely limit the location and size of Nemesis, Planet X, the Destroyer, the Red Dragon, the Red Kachina, you name it. So not only is he departing just from very logical scientific basis, but and not only is he disagreeing with men who are far smarter about this stuff and than he is, not only is he disagreeing with the dozens of scientific articles that talk about Nemesis, not only is he disagreeing with John Anderson of NASA and Robert Harrington of NASA, not only is he disagreeing with them, but he's also di disagreeing with thousands of years of Babylonian documentation, Mayan documentation, Egyptian documentation, about the formation of the asteroid belts, about the collision of planets. He's choosing to ignore all of that, to push a non-scientific, non-logical agenda. And that is to convince you there is no planet X, and while we sit here and argue about it, we just lost another hour of our preparation time. And the last thing is, you know, we're in a survival mode. And the most scariest thing happening right now is the way they're hyping this war. They're already predictive programming. There's going to be nuclear. There's going to be, there's going to be bio. There's going to be, you know, they're telling you it's coming. Mains, when, when mainstream tells you it's coming, nine times out of ten, it's coming. And when they tell you it's not coming, it probably still is coming. Remember, the quarantines weren't coming. You were getting blocked off of Facebook the day Wuhan closed the borders of that city. We said it's, co it's coming here. Oh, no, take that, off. take that off of your social media. You're getting blocked for saying that. And then what happened? The quarantines came. And they were only supposed to be 15 days. That was a lie. And then they had to like get around it by not calling it a quarantine. The spying upon Americans. The patents of directed energy weapons. The launching of 1,800 uh, satellites. And we don't need any more satellites. Uh, it's... It, you know, unless you want to monitor every single person that walks the planet. Well, then, you'll yeah, you need a few more satellites. So, so what's going on is, is beyond belief. But your brain has to be your savior. And if you're going to a website, a fact-checking site that tells you how you should think. Can you imagine how frightening that is? You're going to a computer 
and the computer's telling you how you should think. That, that is as frightening as the threat of nuclear war. That's scary. And so, you have to be prepared. You've got to have six months of food. And, and, but not just food. You've got to have six months of protein. And, and you've got to be able to figure out how to get it. Because protein is getting very expensive. So, so again, think, think about what you can use as currency when the reset happens. And they take half your bank account. And then the dollar devalues and becomes even more worthless. And they take you off the oil standard. And then the, now you can use your dollar bills to actually uh, light fires. Like Nostradamus said. Uh, burning m currency in the street to stay warm. That's what, that's what will happen if they go off the oil standard. And they will. China and Russia will go off the oil standard. They're escalating this. It's tit for tat. And um, Russia wouldn't start a nuclear war with us unless, of course, it was planned. So, I mean, that would be like the stupidest thing. And so they're trying to portray Putin as as crazy. But, and, and if he was that crazy, there would be people on the inside that would eventually mutiny and overthrow him. And so uh, we had a power outage at a single store. You couldn't get anything that was in the refrigerated or frozen section. They were locked off. And you couldn't get to the pharmacy by a power outage that affected just a few buildings. And yet, there you were. The shelves were full. The medicine cabinets were full. And guess what? You still couldn't get anything. Oh, you can't play with a credit card because our credit card machine doesn't work. So, you know, when they start talking about power outages, yeah, think again about the implication of when your grocery store loses power. That That's a pretty easy way to starve you right there with food on the shelves. Nope, you can't open that refrigerator door. Until the power gets restored. That's amazing. And then, if the power's gone for too long, what do they have to do with that food? They have to discard it. So they're destroying food at every level of the food chain. They're destroying it on the farms. They're destroying it in the processing plants. They're preventing it from being grown by uh, inhibiting the fertilizer shipments. Anything to do with fertilizer is man-made. This has nothing to do with nature. And, you know, warehouses going up in smoke. I mean, and not just any warehouses. Big, huge, significant players in the food game. Poof, gone in a single night. And right now, the most valuable commodity on planet Earth in the solar system is food. Food is skyrocketing faster than gold, faster than oil, faster than gasoline. And you know and for gasoline, believe me, I have access to storage. I have a boat that stores 200 gallons of gasoline. I have external gas tanks, uh, probably another 200 gallons. I have 400 gallons of store storageable containers. But that's a lot of gas to be keeping around, especially when he starts seeing ground temperatures 180 degrees. So, but, you know, gasoline is a valuable commodity. It will become more expensive. Um, hoarding gasoline is not a bad idea, but too bad you couldn't have done it six months ago, eight months ago. When we were telling you this was going to happen. So, in the last thing, again, if, if, if a strike team comes to your house, knocks on your door, don't answer your door. If they force their way in, you, you scream very loudly. Be angry. Make 
everything they do uncomfortable. Because in the end, the resistance will come from the inside. There's already resistance in the hospitals. Half of all hospital staff are now the resistance. I know. Uh, why, you know. Why would a doctor say you're not allowed to have it and then not confiscate it? It's because he's sick of the death protocols that aren't working. They're seeing the light. And when people start seeing the light, that's when they got to play their trump card. No pun intended. So, stay away from politics. Because all that it will, will divide people. Unite people with a global problem. What's happening in America is happening in every country. All the policies that are being implemented by this administration that you want to blame for what's going on, and they're just puppets, and you want to argue and fight and end your family relationships over puppets, you're a fool. You've been sucked in, and you can't get out. But it's happening in every other country. Everything is happening. The, the economies, the restriction of trade, the, the destruction of food, the burning of warehouses, the restriction of fertilizer shipments. It's not just happening here. It's happening everywhere. And as long as you got somebody to blame, I guess you're just going to sit on your couch and turn on that uh, square box where uh, they actually call it programming. So get ready. Have a plan. It's bug out time. It's time to liquidate things that you don't need. The, the, the blank spots on the shelves are empty. There are, they said, we heard in May you were going to start seeing empty places on the shelves. And that's what we're seeing. Empty places on the shelves. But guess what's not empty? Tobacco and alcohol. Imagine that. So, get ready. Don't argue. Set an example. Ask questions. Don't make statements. When people start yelling at you because you ask a question, the conversation's over, and now you can come back on them. You know, give them a date of two, and you say, how come... I can't. I asked a simple question because I'm an independent, and I believe every every creep out there in government is controlled. And they have. I mean, Citizens United, uh, give me a break. And so, I asked this person: Is every bad thing that's ever happened in this country? the Democrats' fault? That's a yes and no question. All you had to do was say yes or no. And that person didn't answer the question. They became belligerent. They became aggressive. They became insulting. They became they became non-human. They became psychotic. F you? I just had a question. A question. I can't ask a question? How sick is that? And I'll leave you with that. How sick is that? You can't ask a question anymore. Yeah. One last thing about the questions. When I was in the hospital and the doctor said he was following the science and I could not have ivermectin and must have remdesivir, which the science says doesn't help, which the science says causes renal failure in 30% of the people. I asked him a question, a doctor, and the doctor refused to answer the question. I asked him, whose science are you using? The NIH? He looked at me and told me, this conversation's over. Till next time. Thanks for listening.